Okay, here's a look at Legacy United Gears. So here's just a quick look at the box on the back, the side, the other side, the top and the bottom with words and stuff. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's like it's, uh, out of the box. And just have to be careful of anything falling out. And of course you get your instructions and this <laughs> trash piece here. Uh, instructions, so let's just take a really quick look at the instructions. Um, this should be an easy transformation. Uh, yeah, I guess this is important. You have to attach his chest and it comes with the gun. Looks like you could attach it to the back and his hand, of course. Uh, and then steps to the transformation. Uh, yeah, so now let's uh, go ahead, take a look at the figure and <laughs> There's a new trash uh, toilet paper, which uh, has Autobot symbols. But that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> now they're paying to have these uh, images on this paper. I think uh, there's a more cost-effective ways to uh, have these accessories uh, come with the figure without having to go through all this mess which could potentially create a problem of missing something so i think that's why it's important to look at the instructions to make sure you only get these two accessories and then uh the other thing is trying to get this out here i don't like they need to redesign this because now I'm starting to feel what uh, some of the kids were saying that this is the part that they really hate the most. And you know what? <laughs> I totally agree. This is really so frustratingly annoying trying to get this all up. But once you do, this is what we get. We have gears, but uh, we need to first get them assembled. So it looks like it's just a little tabby and you just push it in. And then we have that cool feature which it opens up, but it's a mainline retail figure. So you don't get all that nice paint or you don't get his uh, personality chip thing. That would have been a cool accessory. Uh, but yeah, this uh, figure does look and feel pretty good. So you're just your typical mainline figure with little <laughs> things, little nitpicky things that I'm bugged about, like this gray plastic here when it should be all red. Uh, yeah, and then like his forearm here should be blue <laughs> instead of gray. But yeah, this is a mainline retail. And for the most part, this does uh, look pretty cartoon accurate. It still has a, a lot of extra sculpted detail, which is nice. I mean, I did study and draw this figure, so I'm very aware of what this figure should look like. Um, but yeah, this is what we're getting. It's not 100% tune accurate, but this is uh, now the closest that we're getting with mainline retail. So now let's take a <laughs> closer look at that head. This is where those accessories uh, with different faces comes in handy like what fans toys uh, gave us with all those different face plates and then of course that feature i showed you you can open this up and then let's see articulation shoulders can go forward and back out to the side you do get bicep swivel double jointed elbow fist rotation forgot the head does just swivel back and forth. Oh, it is on a ball joint, so you can go a little up and down as well. You get uh, waist rotation. Is there an ab crunch? No, I don't think there's an ab crunch here, but the legs can also go out to the side. You do get a uh, double jointed knee bend, so that's kind of cool. And uh, let's see, the feet, you do get ankle rocker. And no toe tilt up and down. So yeah, overall, 
Yeah, this looks cool. And then we have his gun here. We can give it to him. <laughs> Starts firing away. So uh, that's uh, just a quick look at the figure. So for some comparison, here's a look at Gears next to some of his uh, Season 1 mini bots. And you could see so far they're looking uh, pretty nice. But we know that we are getting a more G1 accurate Bumblebee. So uh, this one I'm going to have to let go now and give it away or actually put it in my extra pile. And most likely we are going to get a new cliff jumper off that same mold. Uh, so I'll put him aside. And uh, one of my issues with that bumblebee is they're doing the same thing. They're putting uh, black windows when it should be blue. But um, yeah, uh, that's what we're going to get next. And so here is actually what we have. And you could see that now we are actually missing a wind charger. So that's uh, something I'm really looking forward to next. And just for the heck of it, uh, let's bring out some of the Season 2 uh, mini bots just so we could see what they kind of look like all together. So here is uh, Beachcomber, a really nice figure. Here is Cosmos, another really nice figure. And Warpath. So we're missing uh, Sea Spray and uh, Power Glide. But for right now, as a fill-in, what I'm using is the Fans Toys 1.0 version for their uh, Sea Spray. So let's uh, move these guys to get a little better color coordination. And uh, for Power Glide, I'm using X Transbots, uh, one of their old figures. This is actually pretty good. Doesn't have as much articulation, but. Uh, yeah, this is still a really nice figure. So just here giving you a, a look at some of the season two, which Gears actually never really appeared with any one of these figures. But that's uh, just a quick look at some of these other figures. Okay, here's a look at all the gears that I have in my collection. So here you could see what I have. And I'm sure there's a lot of other Gears figures that were made out there, such as uh, the live action movie Repaint. Um, and I'm not sure if Iron Factory made a Gears, but I'm sure there are other Gears figures that were made out there. And uh, I know uh, my YouTube friend Chris would probably know um, yeah, he has a, a lot of collections like this, so he probably has more uh, figures than I do. But this is just what I have. So let's just take a closer look at each one. So here you could see this is the original G1 Gears. And then after the G1, there was a Chug, but they technically didn't make one. Uh, but uh, third party did give us a Gears. This one here is um, by iGear. And it's a little bit too big. Um, and then uh, there was also, I forgot who, uh, SXS made this version, which is technically a chug, but I, I call this a masterpiece wannabe because you could see how he's almost the size of fans toys gears. And then after that, uh, Hasbro did give us a gear, a Legends, and this is when they were doing kind of like a stylized rendition and then um mech fans toys uh gave us a better version which is more tune accurate so i like this guy he looks a little cute and adorable and then um uh, we have our masterpiece legends so so far this is magic squares version and i'm really looking forward to uh new age you know, for that nice uh, paint finish. See what that's going to look like. And I don't think Takata is going to give us a masterpiece. But in terms of masterpiece, this is what we have. <laughs> this is cool. Here's Fans Toys. I said it's cool because look at that face. That's what I was telling you is uh, kind of missing from um, 
this version by Hasbro, the Legacy, but this is uh, now Hasbro's latest version of Gears, and uh, it's actually not bad. So here's just a quick comparison. Uh, I didn't really get all into detail about each one, which if you know me, I can get really all into it, but I just thought I'd give you a quick look at some of these guys so you could see. Uh, this is really nice, and I could see why some people are opting out of Masterpiece because, um, yeah, these figures are really big. But these, this is what I call your definitive uh, set for your collection. It's just a little expensive for some people, and uh, they're just too big. It's one of the issues that I'm having. And then uh, next to that are the Legends. This one's Magic Square. And I'm really looking forward to New Age. I'm actually collecting both Magic Square and New Age. And of course, we always have your G1, which uh, they always seem to have a mask. They don't seem to have a face. And then they always have that chrome-plated uh, silver and some die cast. I don't think... Uh, is this die cast? Yeah, well, mo some of the old G1 does have die cast, but this one's chrome-plated silver. Um, but yeah, you could see, yeah, these are what I have. So that's it. <laughs> I don't want to go rambling on and on. So uh, just wanted to give you a quick look at all the gears in my collection. So now let's go ahead and transform gears into his alt mode and take a look at that. Okay, to transform gears into alt mode, spread his arms out a little bit and then lift up his arms all the way like so and then here from the side we want to drop down his chest and drop down his back as well and you could see the tires you can pull these tires out like so and then flip them upside down you could see where we're going now and then here you can fold in his head under the front part of the vehicle and then these feet part you want to bring out part of the vehicle here and then you want to fold over these legs till it fits in here and you might have to adjust it on this double hinge so let me show you here so when you flip it over it might not have that clearance so with that double hinge you can kind of pull it back and then it will go down and then once you do just make sure it's all tucked in nice and flush and then here his uh, chest you want to bring it down and then we can lift up this bottom part here and there are two gray tabs there that go into the little red slots there line them up tab it in give it a good squeeze and then here just close that up and then his arms you just basically now fold them in like so and there is a um, little tab here and a slot there make sure you get those lined up tabbed in on both sides and then we have gears after i get this tab in transformed into his alt mode okay here's a look at gears in alt mode and you could see for a mainline retail figure i think uh it's okay it's not a uh, very tune accurate like the cylindrical shape for the canopy here but you know they they did a nice job um this is not going for 100% tune accuracy, but uh, overall, I think uh, they did a, a nice job on this figure. But now let's just get a closer look and I'll just point out some more things. So first of all, I'll just say something that I noticed right away. So uh, you have all these ports here for his weapon, which I, I think they're kind of overdoing it because now it looks like Gears was just went through a drive-by shooting and you have all these holes in here, which I don't like. Um, so yeah, maybe they should kind of cut back on that little uh, playable gimmick here. And then the bag here, 
This, I know a lot of people have complaints on it, but I'll just point out this. I mean, it just looks really weird. You have an Autobot symbol there that's upside down. If anything, what they should have done is probably use the ball joint here so you can kind of rotate this, tuck this under. But then you're going to get some people complaining about the back looking like this. Actually, I don't mind the back looking like this. I think this looks better than this, in my opinion. But other than that, you know, it's really nice. You get uh, nicely painted uh, headlights there with the yellow, all this nicely sculpted, sculpted grill, the Autobot symbol, the uh, blue painted windows and stuff. Uh, yeah, all the extra details. It's a really nice nice looking figure so now let's uh zoom out here and compare this with some of the other figures so here's the masterpiece this is by fans toys and here is a uh, magic square um it's a little bit smaller and then last we have the uh, original g1 <laughs> which uh yeah the difference here you could see he has a uh, black windows and the cartoon always has like the blue windows. Um, but here you could see he does have kind of like that cylindrical shape for the canopy, uh, which is nice. And um, that's also what uh, Magic Square and Fans Toys did. You have that nice uh, curved shape here. Looks really nice. And I just want to point out transforming both of these. Um, it's fun in that, you know, it's it's like playing a puzzle, like the Rubik's Cube. Uh, but both of these are very panel-y. And that may be a little frustrating for some people. Because here, this one, <laughs> you saw me, this is pretty easy to transform. That's what makes this really uh, mainline retails uh, fun to play with. Because, you know, you could transform them back and forth and... You could be really rough with this and you don't have to worry about this breaking but these um yeah it's it's not like it's a bad thing i mean there are some other companies uh that design their figures very overly complicated and you know you run the risk of breaking them but these even though these are very complicated and uh, very panelly, you don't have that issue. But I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on that. Um, yeah, because it was kind of fun, but then I didn't like how long it took to transform them because there's so many um, um, panels and stuff you need to properly fold up and things. But yeah, you could see... This is what these guys look like. <laughs> all the different uh, versions. Well, not all the different versions, but just the main ones. So you have your original G1. You have your Legends or Mini Masterpiece Legends. You have your Mainline Retail and Masterpiece. So I'll just end it there and uh, just say that, you know, I, I do like this figure a lot. Like I said, this is really fun to play with. Uh, easy to transform uh and uh yeah it, it's pretty fun and he goes great with the other characters like brawn and huffer and uh yeah we gotta hope the, they give us the other mini bots soon so that's it that's my review this is a, a really nice figure and i don't give recommendations because if you want it you'll get it if you don't you won't uh, but with that said, I'll just tell you this is a nice figure. Uh, it's worth getting, in my opinion. So that's it. That's my review for the Transformers Legacy United Gears. Excuse me, please. I don't want to be pushy, but aren't you forgetting something?